Okay, right now I'm juggling the controller for the drone and my handheld camera. What you see there is an Arden node. It's a power beam that's been removed from its case and inserted into a 3D printed housing. I kept everything in line to maintain a center of gravity. And I have about 25 feet of 550 cord between the node and the drone itself. I'll pan up so you can see the drone. There's the drone. And right now I'm just testing flight time. Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the comms prepper. And I just completed a 12 minute test flight trying out my new Arden node here. This is a modified power beam made by Ubiquity with some aftermarket antennas, a 2.4 gig antenna and a 5 gig. And Arden stands for Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network and I'll put a link down below. And I 3D printed this yellow housing here on a Creality CR-10S Pro 3D printer that I got from tinymachines3d.com and I'll put a link down below to their website. The printer has an incredible build plate volume and I was actually able to print that whole thing in one shot uh, in height on the 3D printer. Uh, for the test flight I used my Phantom 3 standard drone with another 3D printed part. I have my part 107 anti-collision lights on the side. I use those all the time. They help me see the drone even during daylight hours. The test was somewhat successful. I think the unit's still a little too heavy. Right now I'm using four, I'm sorry, eight alkaline AA batteries, and I think I need to change that down to AAA batteries. That might be enough to power the node because I was only able to get 12 minutes of flight time in. To provide some vertical separation between the radios on the drone for flight control and video feed and the node itself, I have 25 feet of 550 cord. The test was a success, but I want to make this a little bit lighter. Uh, I modified this design and punched a lot of holes in the yellow housing to reduce the volume of plastic needed to hold all this together. And we'll see if I can turn this over for you. And this is also meant to be modular. Sorry about that transition. I had to let a car go by. This was printed to be modular, so this battery housing will disconnect and this cap screws off. And the idea was I could put this in a box, pack it up, but the overall concept is to support emergency communications, maybe you don't have line of sight between multiple stations running Arden or running nodes. And if you can put a drone up for 15, 20 minutes to fill that void so all the stations can connect, you can pass a lot of emergency communications, bring the drone down, change the battery, do a flight check, and maybe have scheduled windows where you actually put a drone up that everybody knows and they can have everything waiting in queue their messages or phone calls they're waiting to make uh, or email traffic put the drone up let's say at the top of the hour for 15 minutes bring it down wait two hours put it up again but i'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera here and disassemble this unit to show you how it breaks down so here are the three components there's actually a fourth component this antenna housing here that i used hot glue to hold it on i apologize for all this hot glue i use a lot of hot glue and i'm prototyping this is the cap, it threads on. The new version will have a lot less plastic. I'm gonna punch a lot of holes in it in the AutoCAD software to lighten the load, reduce the plastic volume. And I'm gonna change this housing out a little bit and make it smaller so I can use AAA batteries because the battery power in the node really only needs to last as long as the flight time of the drone itself. I probably could also use lithiums in there as well. This housing actually pops out although I can't do that with and hold the camera at the same time where you can change the batteries. I use these 9 volt connectors here to connect to the top of the battery pack and then make the connection between the two halves. You can see I have these bayonet connectors on there and for now I just marked it with the sharpie so I know when it's in the lock position. But what I was trying to achieve here is a way to reduce the size so you could fit it in a go bag, make it a little bit smaller and then when you need it assemble it and fill those voids of line of sight where you need communications during an emergency or some kind of disaster. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board a little bit and thin up the plastic, lighten the load a little bit. I don't think this needs to be this thick here. I could probably make these walls a little thinner, change this down to a triple A size and make a smaller cap and reduce the weight that way. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. 
This has been the Comms Prepper with another video demonstrating how you can use a drone to support emergency communications. Thanks for watching, everybody.